Sunbreaker was ruined, and I am upset about it. Okay, hold on. We're going to rewind, go back in time to the days where Sunbreaker really made you feel powerful. YouTube, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing a post commentary video. That's right. I want to look back to the time when Sunbreaker was the best subclass for me, and I'm also going to tell you what I really don't like about it now. In the background, there's going to be some, you guessed it, Sunbreaker gameplay, so you can be entertained as I talk to you about some nonsense and my opinion that some of you will disagree and probably get too upset about. <laughs> But Frost, it's 2023. You can't have an opinion or you're going to get canceled, bro. Yeah, I'm going to dive into the dark arts here for sure. I have been playing time for many years and the subclass that I played the most out of any in the game is more than likely Sunbreaker. It was my go-to, it was my main. I loved it so much in 6v6. And I think this is a good opportunity for me to tell you that this video is only focusing on PVP. <laughs> so PVE mains, please calm down, put your pitchforks down. I'm not trying to talk here that your lordly restoration, never dying godlike uh, setups is not you know good or anything. I'm just here to talk for the PVP folks and for myself really, but yeah. I'm a passionate Sunbreaker Tyne and it hurts my heart that I don't even use this subclass at all inside of Crucible ever since they introduced 3.0. And I've had to guess why it's because when they started looking at these 3.0s, they had these verbs at the top as priority and then everything else was focused around those verbs. So with Sunbreaker and really any other class, we have Cure Restoration for Health Regeneration, we have Radiant for bonus damage, and we have Scorch or Ignite to create some combo damages. And I'm not sure why, but I feel like either A, they were too scared to give the Titan more neutral play abilities, or they just tried too hard to shift what existed on the Sunbreaker to mesh into the verbs, and it just resulted in the subclass being overall just more disappointing to use. So Destiny 2 has been around for years. By now, we should understand how important grenades are to our gameplay. So I hope you understand why I think these grenades are so underwhelming when it comes to the Sunbreaker, especially because at least two of these were very unique to that character. Now, two major problems I noticed is that number one, it's pretty rare to even get a grenade kill. And number two, the reward doesn't seem to be worth it. You'll make a sunspot in the distance and take advantage of the aspect, but then it's almost like you look at the sunspot in question. Is it worth running over there for just restoration when I can just stay here behind cover and recover my health the same way? <laughs> Yeah. While in Destiny 1, our grenade kills would grant us health regeneration and even at times make those sunspots, it would stay true to that same type of fantasy when it first got introduced into Destiny 2. We could get grenade kills and also make a sunspot and then we would just get our health back and even still get that damage bonus that was very powerful to utilize. So in order to utilize that health regeneration, you have to use a fragment that gives you cure on your grenades, thus choosing that or something that could give you more stats or even a more stronger uh, ability for your neutral play. Again, <laughs> it's kind of rare to even get a grenade kill, so that fragment in turn kind of just fails. There is a brand new aspect here on the Titan that is meant to make these abilities even better. It's the Roaring Flames, but in Crucible, you don't really take advantage of this whatsoever. I'm actually going to pull up the Destiny 1 skill tree for Sunbreaker so we can draw some direct comparisons to see what went wrong from where it started to where it is now. So in terms of grenades, I definitely have to tell you they were way more unique pre 3.0 and in Destiny 1 because obviously every character can use all grenades available to them. With a Warlock, the Healing Grenade, your Sticky Grenades, Fire Bolts are very unique to you as you do have an aspect that enhances those grenades. Even with a Hunter not having such an aspect, it feels like you have a very unique nade to yourself, which is a Trip Mine. You pair those with the Spine Gauntlet and then you can make other players bald inside of the Crucible. As for the tie-in, back in Destiny 1, we had Fusion Grenade, Thermite Grenade, Incendiary Grenade. Obviously not the easiest type of grenades to use, but they felt very unique to the Titan, partially because they only belong to him. 
now here in 3.0 they didn't make this character turn these grenades to be way more special to him they're just kind of basic options and not really the best ones out of all the options that you do have as an og player i can tell you right off the bat two of these grenades used to be incredible and over time they were lost thermite grenades used to do a lot more damage i feel like they were way more instant but here in 3.0 it seems like part of their damage was just removed in favor of giving it that scorch effect you know to apply that verve and then we have incendiary grenade which back in destiny 1 they used to work in a way where if you hit the nade right in between the person's legs it would actually do about 170 damage i think and you would get the most satisfying i'm talking satisfying one shot kill in the game it felt like you were putting your entire skill into landing that grenade in the perfect spot and you were rewarded so well but here in 3.0 it doesn't matter bungie doesn't care if you do a really good well placed grenade they instead turned it into another ability in favor of the verbs it just applies a bunch of scorch arguably the easiest and best grenade to use to create these ignitions inside of the game as i'm talking to you about grenades i'm looking at the perks here for destiny 1 sunbreaker and the differences between sunbreaker and destiny 2 and 3.0 sunbreaker i notice i keep talking about sunspot so we might as well get to that yeah what what happened to sunspots they were nerfed so hard you used to be able to walk into it and get faster abilities yeah that still happens and even get restoration now but the biggest change was losing that damage bonus and i feel like that was really the biggest reason as to why sunspots were sunspots you know when you thought about that power fantasy when it came to walking into that flame you always wanted that extra damage power the abilities and the health region was pretty much just an additional you know effect on the side the cherry on top so when you take off the whipped cream and everything down below for the substance what are you left with just the cherry it isn't really a complete dessert i really wish they would have figured out a different solution other than just nerfing the sunspots because it's not like they were broken really <laughs> it was kind of like that's all the sunbreaker really had and to many people like myself that was worth it i wanted to fight to get that one grenade kill that one melee kill to start my incredible journey of slaying and starting a flame path in the crucible just destroying people with that damage bonus man while the grenades are a very important part of the sunbreaker toolkit let's not forget about the melee because i definitely did i never realized how amazing and powerful the melee used to be uh for the original sunbreaker until i got to experience the ugh, insanely downgraded version of it here in solar 3.0 so today yeah we have a throw of a hammer that i absolutely hate you can't hit anybody with it and then you have the inferior shoulder charge that has weird lock-ons and the damage is also very just meh because part of it was removed in favor of giving it scorch i guess i don't like that at all so just let's do some direct comparisons yeah let's look back into destiny one and then we'll look at the original destiny 2 sunbreaker so in d1 our melee ability would just be a basic punch that would burn enemies with a heavy solar strike we had three options to further enhance this melee we had melting point which would weaken targets for both you and your allies and that was amazing dude it was so rewarding to just fly at a boss to apply that effect or whatever debuff and even though you might die at least you feel like you were helping your team you know it's very titan like besides that we had thermal vent which states that sun strike releases a solar explosion on hit and it creates a sunspot and the last one which was super cool it reduces the sun strike cooldown and then getting a killing blow with that melee ability would instantly recharge it and yeah that would synergize with your other perks that give you health region so pretty cool stuff yeah these type of perks would stay quite similar going into destiny 2 but the melting point was definitely separate Separated from Code of the Siege Breaker, but that was fine because when you played PvP, you didn't really care that much about the Sun Charge. Um, and then when you played PvE, 
I guess you did miss the sunspots, but that sunbreaker melee charge was so worth it to debuff targets. It was so epic, man. With that being said, what are we left with in Destiny 2? Like I already stated, we got a throwable hammer that's meant to be like Thor's hammer that I have to just open my eyeballs 10 times more to try to find on the battlefield. And then more often than not, that hammer that didn't hit anybody is in the middle of the battlefield that if I run into it, I'm just going to die to somebody else <laughs> just watching that lane, right? It's just completely terrible, man. I, I hate that melee ability. Oh, but don't worry, Frostbolt. They added an aspect that gives you another ability for your melee. Oh, my God. So you sprint and then you slide and you activate your melee. You telling me I'm going to do an uppercut with two hammers, bro. And I send out a wave of flames and then I can use the melee ability again to do a freaking solar blast at the bottom and kill some Whoa, it's trash i hate it dude i am not a fan of these sprint slide activate melee it's so floaty right i'm so floaty i'm stuck in the air what happens when the first wave doesn't hit a player i'm just stuck there in animation it's it's not good i don't like it it is a failed attempt to try to make the sunbreaker melee feel unique i miss the old kinds oh my god <laughs> Thankfully, Bungie didn't decide to just completely scuff the Sunbreaker Super that much. Stayed the same over the years. There has been some different versions of it where sometimes it was just borderline broken. You remember Destiny 1? You would just hear that super pop. And then you were like, oh shit. Everybody turn around, run away. You would spawn in and you see your teammates running back into your spawn. You knew at that moment what that meant. That meant there was a sunbreaker out in the wild and you needed some cover. It was crazy. Here in Destiny 2, it's very much tame, still pretty strong. I do have to say, I feel like it runs out very fast. Part of the reason is because it relies on the sunspots to keep it up, but because those sunspots are kind of weird to play around, yeah, it runs out quickly. The tracking is very just piss poor compared to something like the Domblade has. They're kind of similar subclasses or supers, I should say. So drawing direct comparisons is pretty fair considering they kind of do the, the same job. And then Domblade is kind of succeeding in what it's attempting to do. So we talked about the grenades. We talked about the melee and I talked to you about what I don't like and do like. <laughs> What is my conclusion? Well, Sunbreaker died so that Lorelei Splendor could live. <laughs> it all went wrong the moment they introduced that exotic. <laughs> the verbs were also a big reason as to why the Sunbreaker probably feels so limited, but not as much as this exotic really feels like it just, you know, you know Lorelei Splendor, man. <laughs> all right.